Hey everyone, it's Mari. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have a 12 by 12 layout here. This is the project that I'm going to be creating today. I'm going to be showing you the entire process here. This is for the Vicky Booten design team. And I'm going to be using this really sweet black and white photo here and these two patterned papers from Storyteller. This one here that you see is called Bohemian and then the one with the text on it is called Stardust. These are beautiful papers and I absolutely really love the colors they're going to be the inspiration for the mixed media that I'm going to be doing today and I'm going to start off with some paper tearing I I love using torn paper on my projects because I just really love the texture that that torn edge adds to the project and so I just wanted to kind of create this curved edge kind of like a concave sort of piece on the left side and I'm going to imitate that curve that I've created by tearing that first piece the bohemian paper by uh, and I'm also going to go ahead and tear the stardust paper with the text side up this paper is the one that has that really pretty navy with the stars on the other side and I'm going to be using that side of the paper on this project too here eventually so um, you can just see here that that's kind of a little bit of a wonky tear and I am going to fix that here just by tearing it so that it's just a little bit more of a curve there rather than a point this is super super easy to do um, some people may not really like to to tear their paper um, but I don't know I just find that it's really fun and it's it creates a really neat effect now I am going to be using my Tim Holtz decal edge trimmer to trim off the excess on my photo here now I did print my photo at four by three so obviously this is a four by six piece of photo paper I'm just going to trim that down and sorry that I I've got you can just see my mic <laughs> my mic uh, stand there on the right side of the screen there sorry about that I don't know why I didn't get that out of the frame but anyways I guess it's not a big deal you can still see what I'm doing I am um, uh, I have just marked off with a pencil where the curved edge of that paper is going to be because I want to do a little bit of mixed media to the right of where the patterned paper will be. Now I am working on some Vicky Booten Foundations paper here and what I'm doing there with the Vicky Booten art crayons is I'm just scribbling a bunch of the different greens and blues out onto a piece of plastic packaging. That's actually the packaging from the uh, foundations paper that I had left over once that paper pad was done and used up I saved the, the paper the uh, plastic cover to use for scribbling out my art crayons so I've just going I'm going to water those down there you can see I've used my distress bottle to spritz some water on there and I'm going to just uh, get those all nice and watery and I'm going to just grab another piece of packaging to apply that onto my paper so with a combination of that packaging I'm going to just pick up a little bit of the pigment that's uh, all watered down there on that plastic on the right just going to pick that up with my plastic and then just tap it onto the paper I have added water onto the paper there you saw me spritz water onto the paper so that when the pigment is on the foundations paper it will just move around nicely with that water that I added and you'll just see me picking up the paper and letting the pigment flow I just really like how it creates a really kind of organic look that way and I just I like that and so I'm going to go ahead as well and add some splatters of that pigment to my paper I'm going to add some drips of pigment just by squeezing the bristles of my brush and letting them drop I like how that splatters and kind of creates a really neat effect some of that will get covered up by the elements that I add but that's fine it's it's all good some of them do show up and that's that's all that I want so now what I'm going to do is just use my heat tool here to get that all dried and when I'm happy with how that looks um, I'm just going to add a few more splatters and I'll be ready to move on to the rest of the process here so just going to add a few splatters with a smaller brush so that there's some small splatters and some large this is the stamp set that's part of the storyteller collection I'm going to use some of Vicky's metallic uh, paint uh, not paint ink here to stamp up one of the stamps from the storyteller stamp set this stamp says thankful for this memory and I just really like that I thought it just obviously 
I mean, it goes with any scrapbooking layout, right? But I just really liked it for this picture that I'm documenting with here today. And so I'm going to stamp that onto the layout with that gold pigment ink from that uh, metallic color wheel. I'm just going to place my paper back on here just to see where I want this. I wanted to put this uh, stamp in three different areas and stamp it out three times in each of those three areas. So, and I'm going to do second generation stamping here. I'm not inking that stamp up every time I stamp it. I'm more than happy to use second and third generation stamping here with my stamp. And I just like how that kind of changes the depth of the color so that some of the stamping is a little bit more faded and some of it's more vibrant. I think it just makes it look more interesting in that way. So you'll just see here, I'm going to stamp it once and then I'll stamp it again without re-inking the um, stamp up. So just going to do that in kind of like an area up at the top and then sort of more in the middle and then one in the lower section of the layout just to add that stamping around a little bit. So yeah, I really like this stamp set. I think it's really fun. If you have not purchased your stamp set from Storyteller, um, make sure you get that into your stash because I think there's so many ways you can use that stamp set. I've used it on quite a few of my projects here already. Now I did also want to just add a little bit of that gold to the torn edge of my project. So I'm just, I've just picked up the gold and I'm just brushing it onto that edge there. And I'm just going to go ahead and roll the edge of the paper a little bit and distress it a little bit more and uh, go ahead and layer those together. Just love those two papers. And I really tried to imitate the color palette in that Bohemian cloud paper um, with my mixed media. And I, I did really try my best to sort of like mix my crayons so that they kind of matched up. And I think, I think it actually ended up pretty good. I think the colors really do coordinate nicely with those papers. Now I'm just kind of sorting out where I want my photo to be placed. I don't want it in the middle. I want it to be in either, you know, the top third or the lower two thirds kind of thing. Like I don't want to just plunk it in the center. So you'll see that the photo is more to the bottom of the layout than it is to the middle or the top. I'm going to start to commit by adhering some things down. And I'm going to start off here with the, the, far left. I'll get the Bohemian paper stuck down here. I'm just using my Kokio tape runner and I really like this tape runner because it is repositionable but yet it is super super sticky. I've never had an issue with things um, not staying where I've adhered them with that tape runner. It just works really well and I'm just going to go ahead and press that into place and then I will start to work on the rest of the different elements of my project here. Just going ahead with um, putting that photo on there again and just really trying to sort out what I want to do for the rest of the project because I really didn't have an idea at the beginning. Um, you know, when I, I often, when I'm starting a project, don't necessarily really have a design in mind. Oftentimes it's just get the supplies out and just, you know, go with it. And that kind of just, I feel like it's just really fun for me. I, I enjoy that. Sometimes I have an idea in mind of what I want to do, but most often, more often than not, I just kind of um, going with what feels natural or what I just feel like doing. Now I'm just using my distressing tool to go ahead and distress the edge of that pattern paper that I've backed my photo with. That star paper, the stardust paper that I used to mat the photo is actually from the eight by six paper pad. Um, an eight by six paper pad is a must for me when I buy a collection. Um, I love Vicky's eight by six. It's double sided and I, it's awesome. So I actually have a couple of those in my stash and I love them for matting photos just because the, the scale of the print is a little bit smaller. I'm using some of the die cuts from the die cut packs to mat or to layer the photo mat here. I've used a frame and I've also used one of the, I think this is one of the library cards. And I'm going to go ahead and just trim off the excess there that's not going to show up anyways because I will stick that away and I'll use it on another project. So I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid adhesive to stick this down. I did also put a layer of foam, craft foam behind my photo and that's just some craft foam from uh, Michaels. And this is possibly one of if not my most favorite, one of my favorite elements from the die cut packs is this ruler. I really love it. I think it's genius. And 
One thing that you can use these, this little ruler piece for in your projects is just a little place to ground your photo. Um, love that. It's just a little ledge that I can then also add other things to. Now, this is a really large die cut piece and I love the colors in it. And I love how the background behind the foliage in that vase has little splatters on it. And it actually almost blends right in with the background that I created when I put it into place. So what you're watching me do here, it just kind of looks like I'm not doing much of anything, but in my brain, I'm sorting out what I, you know, the placement of where I want my embellishments to go and how I want to sort of like add details to my project. This strip of the Stardust paper is just, I think it's about an inch wide and I just trimmed it off of the 12 by 12 paper. And I just like to finish the left side of a layout like this off with another strip. I just feel like it just adds a little sort of like a finishing touch. And here you can see um, more of the die cut pieces that I've added. And this just sort of like creates this whole little co cohesive area where my photo is and I've used a round circle sticker from the cardstock sticker sheet there that says sweet soul I love that I've added some chipboard and some more die cut pieces there and I'm going to finish this off with um, some of the those little puffy stars which quite possibly might be my favorite embellishment from Storyteller but there's so many favorites that I don't know I just but I do really love those little puffy stars. They're amazing. Now I really love that um, sweet soul circle and how that finishes off that little area there. It just, I think, fills that space in. And I really like that, the, the shape of the circle for that spot. I'm just gonna use my T-square ruler, make sure that I have everything um, straight here as I go along. I really struggled um, definitely with making sure and getting things straight. So I always have to go back and make sure I use that T-square ruler. The um, die cut piece there that you see directly to the right of the photo that has the lines on it is obviously the little journaling spot. And I'm not actually going to journal on this layout because this layout is for my niece. This is her sweet little girl here, my great niece. And um, I'm going to send off a batch of scrapbooking layouts to her pretty soon here. I've got a bunch more to send her, but um, just been, my sister and I have both been doing some scrapbooking for her and this is another layout to send out to her this is um, my little great niece here I think playing with a gift that maybe she got for Christmas it's a little remote control car now I am adding lots of foam adhesive to these different little bits um, just to pop them up off the layout you can even see um, some parts of the pieces are flat and some have uh, foam adhesive on them and in this way just adding some dimension to the project and you can just see I'm doubling up the foam adhesive in some places where I'm layering something over top of something that already has foam adhesive on it. Sometimes you have to do that just to make sure things are sitting flat. And I love to do that, but some people like to keep their scrapbooks less dimensional. And so you might not want to add this much dimensional adhesive to your pieces. I just really like how that looks myself. It's a personal thing, um, but I love layering all of these die cut pieces like this one. I love these pieces that Vicki has in her collection. They're genius. And there's some that are chipboard and some that are die cut pieces, but um, I love all of these elements in the collection. I think they're just fantastic. So now I'm just going to take these puffy um, stars that I mentioned earlier. I love these and most of them have a little bit of gold on them. Uh, shiny gold which is perfect for this project because I've got little pops of gold here and there and you can just see here I've added some sewing on that stardust paper on the left and now I'm just going to show you up close the details that I've added here and I just love that little bit of detail that the stitching adds you could add stitching in all kinds of different spots here lots of area for um, journaling and I'm also going to add a little bit of washi tape here and some gold splatters. I'm going to do the gold splatters first and then I'll show you the washi tape that I add um, at the very end. And if you haven't picked up your Storyteller washi tape yet, please go for it before it's gone. And I know that there are a lot of um, stores are restocking Storyteller here right about now because there, there was a bit of a kerfuffle and with getting it I think before Christmas uh, well because it sold out so fast um, but now you it's been restocked so you can get it again and if you haven't picked up this washi make sure you get it because it's 
you know, it's only going to be available for a certain period of time and then it's going to be gone. And it's my favorite Vicky Booten washi to take to date. I absolutely love it. I think it's so interesting, like that measuring tape and then this the star one that I used on this project. Make sure you check the description box below for links to all of the different products that I used and also to Vicky's blog and to the Facebook group. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, I'd love to have you as a new subby. Have an amazing day, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.